Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome to my first ever LEGO Batman review. I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to say this just because I have always wanted to get some more of these 2006 through 2008 era LEGO Batman sets. They're very nostalgic to me. I didn't necessarily grow up with them, though I did experience most of these sets through the LEGO Batman video game, which is one of my favorite video games from LEGO ever. Or my thoughts on these may just be diluted because of the lack of LEGO DC or just Batman interesting sets that LEGO is releasing in the time here and now. So for today's video, Video, we're going to be focusing on set number 7782, the Batwing, the Joker's Aerial Assault. This set includes 523 pieces, retailed for $49.99 when it released in April of 2006. Now you may be wondering, how did I get my hands on this set? Well, flashback about 10 or so years, I got a bulk bin with a lot of Lego stuff. As you do, you let it pile up because it's dirty. And flash forward to now, I decided to finally start going through a lot of those older bulk bins, and this was one of the sets that was included in it. Thankfully, it included all the minifigures, really just had to bricklink a few of the extra stickers, just because the quality wasn't that great, or I wasn't able to reapply them because they disintegrated to dust. This will always be one of my favorite versions of Batman just because it's the one that you see within the Lego Batman video game from way back in 2008. This is just a really, really great figure. Doesn't have arm printing, doesn't have leg printing. It gets the point across, you just get the printing from the front of the torso and even for the headpiece there where you get that white stripe across the top to create the white eyes for the cowl. I just think this is a really great version of Batman. I'll spin him around so you can see the back side there where you get the cape and no back printing for this particular figure. Another fun fact, this is the most expensive set to include this figure. Otherwise, you'd be able to find him in two other sets released in 2006. Another classic design comes with the Joker. Again, very simple when it comes to the printing style. You get that full-on purple outfit with the orange undercoat there. You also get the little green tie from the top. No back printing, only the one facial expression with a big maniacal laugh. Just look at the facial expressions that we got back in the day from this theme, just like Indiana Jones. Lego really went all out in making these characters feel very serious and close to their actual representation. Also I have to point out the uh, Dracula hairpiece recolored in green, which is really interesting to see that they used that for the Joker. This is again just really what I see when it comes to Batman and the Joker all the time from Lego. It's really the representation that I always remember when I think of these characters. I also have to point out his accessory, which is one of those uh, fake guns, which it's funny that he's holding it backwards, the older style gun, with the bang sticker from both sides of it. And finally, we have the Joker's henchman, or at least that's what Lego calls him, the Joker's henchman, just a regular old henchman wearing a purple shirt, which makes him part of the Joker's henchman, I suppose. No printing on that. Doesn't need printing, doesn't need anything, it's just perfect. Facial expression we saw introduced in 2004 for Lego Spider-Man, which I found really interesting. You also find that on other henchman type characters released for the 2006 through 2008 Batman. And we also get these really neat guns, which I believe were brand new for the time period. These were new styled guns made specifically for Batman. It came in some sort of like little multi-pack, which included all the other bat accessories, which you'll be able to find hidden within the Batwing, which we're going to look at in just a minute. To go along with the Batwing, a concept that I was rather surprised to see considering this released back in 2006 was a display stand and it's just really interesting to see that they included something like this. It's something that really blew my mind just because I didn't think that they would include something like this. I mean, is it a helpful display stand? I, I guess. I mean, it gives you that bat symbol look, but at the same time, I'd rather have a different angle, maybe something similar to the stand that we saw for the UCS style Batwing that we saw for Batman 1989. But removing this from its little display stand, it's very simple, it's not locked in by any studs, it's just placed in rather easily. You can see it from the side. Just place it between those Technic beams. 
The display stand itself isn't really anything special, it's just a bunch of parts put together in order to make sure that you have a spot to put this thing. I guess the ladder is a nice gesture as sort of like a way for Batman to get into the vehicle. I believe this platform is included so then it can go along with the rest of the Bat Cave that was released also in 2006. I say that because the platform piece that they're using is the same exact platform that was introduced also for that set. I'm not 100% sure if the Bat Cave set actually connects to this, it's just what I think of considering this is maybe supposed to go on display with that. But still, I'm just really surprised that this is something that they decided to throw in within this set. They definitely didn't need to, they could have just left it as the two vehicles like you'll see later on in 2012. Flying into action, we have the Batwing. Now what I really love about this is just how pointy these edges are here, just the different types of pieces that they're using, these triangular plate pieces in order to capture these different angles for the sides of the wings, I think look really, really cool. You can see that we get some little Batman symbols, those are stickers from the front side. And we have some little pretend lights, some extra gold detailing, which I find really interesting that they have gold detailing. Another thing I have to comment on when it comes to this build is if you do not have the original instructions for this set, um, it is definitely going to be painful considering a lot of the different black pieces being used in here and just referring to what LEGO has as a PDF for instructions. All of the black pieces kind of blend together and it really, really got frustrating to the point where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this without having to buy an actual physical copy of instructions. Though in the end, I was actually able to finish this set just by watching someone's speed build and slowing it down very, very slow just to see how this would look, watching them as they built it. So props to that guy, I'll link his video down down in the description below just because it helped me actually complete this build without having to buy another physical copy of instructions. Now back to the rest of the design, I did want to talk about the cockpit area, which you can lift up using a hinge connection and that'll also reveal this little spot here, which features some extra accessories for your minifigures. In here you'll get the classic Batarang, you'll get this other type of Batarang which I find really odd and weird, it's a special type of Batarang that we haven't gotten in modern day sets. And then another accessory included in there are these handcuffs for the Joker which is also really cool, you can have a character's hands between the handcuffs and also a bar to just hold on to them if you want to just drag them along by the handcuffs, I think that's really cool that they include that. And as I said before, these three accessories along with those two guns with the henchmen all came within one of those special little accessory packs for the Lego Batman theme at the time. Now back to the cockpit, you get a studded area in order to sit your minifigure of Batman. You get a little bit of room for the cape. I definitely don't recommend having him sitting down long term. The cape is really the most annoying part. You might even want to just remove it when it comes to placing him in the cockpit. I also do recommend when it comes to these accessories making sure that they are facing down and within the hole down there. Nice easy fit for your minifigure in there, no problems at all. I mean, I guess there are some little gaps which some people might find annoying. It is what it is for the time period. From the back side, you'll notice that we have this little lever here. This is to enact a feature which you'll find from the bottom, which are these missiles which you can pretend to have pull out once you actually lift the wing which actually looks so much cooler when you lift both of these wings up. When you have it in a front facing position like that, that makes this look even cooler. But as I said, you get this little feature over here in which you can bring out these extra pretend guns, which is super cool that they include some pretend guns much better than the flick fire missiles. Putting those fake guns away, you know, it does kind of make me wish that there was some sort of projectile that you could shoot at the enemy vehicle. Well, fret not, because we do happen to get one of these really nice handy dandy giant missiles or whatever you want to call it. I don't recommend putting this all the way back at first just because you may accidentally shoot yourself because the further back you pull it, um, it once it actually reaches a certain point it will shoot off. As you may notice that little Technic Axle will eventually hit something that will launch this off. So again, be very careful when bringing this up. And eventually it will actually shoot off as it just did. <laughs> 
for sure a great feature as far as giving us an extra projectile. To finish us off, I did want to point out these wing pieces, which are really great to get in the set. Another sticker from the back side. You can see the tail wings and also the tail lights of the vehicle. And I did just want to take a look at the very bottom with the foundation of the build for anyone who was interested in that. For the next vehicle, fighting off the Batwing, we have the Joker Copter, which probably the most annoying part of this is going to be the little ladder here, which is much longer than the one that we got in the 2012 set. And it's also completely loose, so you can remove it. I guess that's a good perk with that. The intent of this being just placed loose off to the side of the vehicle is so then with the cannon that I just showed off at the end of the Batwing, you can shoot this to knock this off of the vehicle, which I guess is a neat play feature. If anything, gives you a target to shoot with that giant projectile. Speaking of the rest of the design, you'll see some more stickers from the side, including these little Joker heads. You get a Joker head from the very bottom as well. You'll see the clip piece connections over here, where these sticker pieces are. You can bring these out to reveal more projectiles, some fake projectiles just like the ones that we saw for the Batwing. One piece I do have to mention when it comes to this design is this tube piece in purple is still exclusive to this set to this day. From the other side we have the same exact design, just to add some more extra projectiles and you do get that range of motion so you can shoot from the front or you can shoot from the back of the vehicle. Probably one of the more clever designs in this set has to be for the bottom skis of the helicopter, which I really like how they use these pieces, which are typically used for like the engines in like Lego City helicopters and stuff. So it's really cool that they use those for the bottom ski feet. Moving our way to the very back, you'll notice that we have this little cone piece. If you pull this out, You'll drop some projectiles, Lego loved that feature back in the day. And these projectiles are these printed headpieces, which is supposed to represent laughing gas. It's using the translucent yellow-green color, which doesn't show up too good on this camera. Definitely look a lot cooler in person, but still cool to get two of these prints back in the day for this particular set. In order to reload them, all you gotta do is just push that axle right back in and you plop them in the back and they're held until you pull that right back out again. From the back tail we get a flag with the letter J for Joker and we get your propeller from the back side which you can spin. Same goes for the one from the very top of the vehicle. Plenty of nice motion with that. And finally, that leads to the actual cockpit design, which I really do like getting this windshield piece here, which you can lift up using the Technic connection up and down. You'll notice inside that we do happen to get this printed 1x2 tile for a Joker card. This only comes in this set, which it's really cool to get it in here. It's exclusive, really cool, neat print. So happy to add that to my collection. And you'll also get some studded room for your minifigures. You can sit Joker in the back. And we do that, of course, because our henchman will be the one who's driving. I mean, I don't know why the Joker would trust the henchman to do this, but he is. And that's at least how they show it within the instructions when you build the set. So overall, for $50 back in the day, I feel like this was definitely worth that money. The minifigure selection alone, getting both Batman and the Joker for what would be the very first time ever in LEGO form, it's really amazing. I think the vehicle builds, though a little bit outdated, are really nostalgic and are the representation that you would even have seen within the 2008 LEGO Batman video game. I also really like that they included a stand for the Batwing, which is something I feel was really unexpected for the time, though I guess if it did fit in with that Batcave display, it's a really nice inclusion. Additionally, I have to appreciate the fake guns that you get on both of these vehicles, as well as the projectiles that you see. I mean, the representation for the laughing gas in the Joker Copter is just really hilarious. I love that face print. It's just... I don't know what it is about this era of LEGO Batman, it's just something that I would love to see more of in modern day. I don't know what LEGO is doing with the DC theme, and it really makes me want to just 
not buy any of their superhero sets and focus my money on stuff like this. I mean, I do have three other sets at the moment that I'm working on gathering parts for, the Arkham Asylum, Penguin Submarine, as well as the Two-Phase Chase. Those are all sets that I was also able to get from yard sale halls back in the day and just haven't been able to complete at this point just because a lot of the sets from this era of Lego Batman are just so, so expensive. If they weren't so expensive and I didn't have other things I was interested in, I probably would have had a lot of them by now. Of course, I'm always watching on eBay. Eventually, I will end up getting my White Whale, that Batcave set. I really would love to get that someday. But anyways, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!